grab one. Let's give this another go. You gotta be strong to be a geologist, right? That's heavy, right? Okay. Well, something. Hey. Yeah. Got grass. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some sand at the bottom. Sand there at the bottom. Yeah. Today we're here at Ames Pond, uh, trying to get some mud, and we have a couple different groups out here with handheld coring devices, and we're just trying to push them down into the mud and trying to get a sediment record. Hopefully, we'll see some changes in either organic content or grain size. Oh yeah. When we're studying lake systems, we really need to ask ourselves, mud. why does mud matter? Why do geologists oh. core oh. lakes and, and collect these long records from lake systems? What we do is compare that mud, what we collect in terms of the fossil content, the organic matter, the plant macrofossils, and all the information that we can gather from this lake record. We can compare it to a lake in Africa, or a lake in China, or a lake in Brazil, and really look at what parts of the earth respond to different levels of climate change. And you can see what we've cartooned here is a little bit of ice that's stuck in the valley that gets then filled and covered over with alluvium, and eventually melts out, creating a kettle hole. So we think that this is Cranberry Pond, it's a kettle hole due to ice that's been buried and then took a few thousand years later, melted out. You can hand it up to me, I'll try. Yeah. It's a good lesson for us to think about doing this with our students, about selecting the right spot to, to do this, where you can actually get some, some decent sediment. You're in more of an urban area and I'm more more rural, so where could you go with your kids? You know, we were talking about doing rivers or bogs or... Um, so this brought out a lot of ideas. You just have to pick your site. We were talking about getting a large wooden doll, a tall stick that's round, and going to the lake area and seeing if we can push it down. And if we can push that down, then we probably could have a successful outcome with the students. So I like to think of it as if the Earth system changes a lot, does the entire Earth respond? Or if we have a small change in the oceans in the North Atlantic, for example, maybe the change that's recorded is only around the North Atlantic. And the more we can see how local, regional, and global different forcings and feedbacks cause change on the Earth's surface, we learn more about how the Earth works. So by analyzing these muds, I like to think of it like a CSI investigation where we really strip away the layers of information and try to really suss out the story that would tell us the best, simplest story about the history of this lake basin and then the context of that in the global system.